We have an absolutely jam packed show for you today. We are never not working on today's episode. We have starts of the week and we take you through a lot of matchups. And most importantly, we got a couple of killer nicknames. This is a show you don't want to miss. Make sure you like it, subscribe, click the bell, and enjoy the show. Today's show is sponsored by Head & Shoulders Scalp Shield Technology. Regular use of Head & Shoulders Scalp Shield provides a continuous invisible shield of protection against dandruff, itch, and dryness, renewing your protection with every wash. Get up to 100% dandruff protection that's never not working with Head & Shoulders Scalp Shield Technology, available at walmart.com. And we want to thank Bespoke Post. Look, uh, they're here to take your adventures to the next level this summer. And I got a box of awesome items. And I'm talking about a uh, Damascus steel knife. Oh, Ooh. dude, Damascus steel is dope. I just look at it. Yes, it's beautiful. It's functional. I don't know how to use it. I just look at it. Well, you, you can cut things with it. You're a man now. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, Very a, I'm a man now? Yes. Uh, look, they have a bunch of these boxes of awesome collections. And uh, you, you basically do this quiz, and you can go to boxofawesome.com. Uh, and your answers help them pick the right box of awesome for you, which I like that name. Uh, they release new boxes every month across a ton of different categories. It's free to sign up. You can skip a month. You can cancel anytime. Each box costs only $45 but has $70 worth of gear inside. So I know when we were going through the process ourselves, there was a bunch of awesome items and truly I, yes I went, I went with the damascus steel because that's just too cool get 20 percent off your first monthly box when you sign up at box enter the code footballers at checkout that's box code footballers for 20 percent off your first box welcome to the fantasy footballers podcast with your host Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. Oh, guess what? It's football time already. What? Oh, oh come it, on. It's kind of football time. Jason, it's week two of the NFL season, and you're over here already jaded? I am here for fantasy, Mike, and I don't expect a lot of output tonight. It's a defensive struggle. <laughs> this is high T football. Antonio Gibson plays football tonight. Yes, he does. Saquon Barkley plays football tonight. Yay! We <laughs> hope he does. What is the – how do you feel about Saquon right now? Poor. Uh, poorly. B bad. Badly. I um, – <laughs> I. Kenny Galladay plays tonight. I do have one league where I have Saquon, and I'm leg I, it was a legitimate thought, like, oh, man, Saquon or James Robinson. Yeah, it and that is – James Robinson did nothing week one, so I'm. it's in a bad way. Currently, the, the emotions of Saquon are badder than bad. So different than you felt before the draft? Uh, well, no, and that's, what, that's what's great. That, what, what is great is that you knew this – prior to the draft that it's going to be a slow start that you're drafting a player for a month into the season because I do think like I, I don't I don't think Saquon goes through this season being just a, a an irrelevant fantasy option agreed but I think he goes through this game as an irrelevant fantasy option and I think that the when people will be asking us who do I try and target and trade low for next week it will be Saquon Barkley yeah, I mean, when you invest, you had to invest the first rounder you on it. You did. Ugh. So sometimes he would fall to the second, but yes. yeah, I mean, you, high capital. It's very hard, even if you think you went into the season knowing what to expect. You go through week one and you're like, Ugh. yes. It's funny because if this was a player who was suspended, and you know you're always going to miss the first two games, mm -hmm. or going to miss the first four games, you'd feel better about it because you wouldn't have him in your lineup, and maybe that is. The rational advice here, and it's tough because of the capital you spent, you might not have the the roster to to do it. But if you were someone that picked up uh, Elijah Mitchell, or uh, <laughs> as we found out on, Wait, we're, we're breaking this out already. Well, we just brought it up. If we, you if you listened to Green Room yesterday, we had our afternoon live show. Jason stumbled into Elijah Missile, a wonderful <laughs> nickname 
for Eliza Elijah Mitchell. <laughs> He's ready to fire. Um, but Which yeah, did like, make me like him a little bit more this week. If you so if you drafted Saquon, but you happen to pick up Tyson or Elijah Missile, put those guys in over Saquon and 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 give it time. Okay. If you're new to the show, prepare for more stupidity like that throughout the season. Twitter at the FF throughout Ballers the <laughs> throughout the remainder of the show. Yesterday's show was incredible because it had these. Like, I didn't realize we were going to be in the Elijah Missile mm -hmm. sweepstakes between me and my co-host, and I didn't know I was going to win and be happy, and you were going to lose and be sad, mm -hmm. and it was all going to happen makes live. You happier. Not to mention, I found out that the league mate, which we brought up our trade offers for uh, Ronald Jones, the buy lows on Ronald Jones, was listening. To us both talk about trading. I think you offered Jalen Rager. I offered mm -hmm. Dallas Goddard. So that was entertaining. Um, that was fun. That was a good time. We have the forecast today. Starts of the week on today's show. The boom, boom kicker. Some news to talk about. We have never not working. That I'll get to momentarily. Jointhefoot.com is our fantasy football community. You can get into leagues over there. You get access to premium content, which means the weekly premium projections, uh, the expanded start sit tool, the consistency charts, an extra episode of the podcast every week, and the I'll, Discord channel. Yeah, and I really want to highlight the Stream Finder, which look through we. The, the nature of that tool is it gains power over time. Week one, look not the best, but it's almost if you if you don't know what I'm talking about, this is something that we had we came up with a couple years ago. It's almost like an inverse strength of schedule, where you can quickly and easily find it which teams you need to target for your streaming quarterbacks for your streaming defenses tight ends it's a tremendous tool that i use every single week so you can check all that out at jointhefoot.com all the articles and rankings and resources that we have are on the website thefantasyfootballers.com never not working Presented by Head & Shoulders, Scalp Shield Technology. Available at Walmart. Any great fantasy football player needs to work a little harder to guarantee success. Do that extra thing. Go the extra mile, as they say. Yeah, never not working. Although, I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, I don't do any work because they just listen to the show. That you're having fun. <laughs> you're having, you're just, this doesn't feel like work. It feels like fun, but that's, uh, <laughs> that's, that's, what, that's, it's, that's what we're trying to do. That's also yeah. never not working. Yeah. Um, so today we're going to talk about some late week waiver wire pickups. We bring up, like when the waivers go through, a lot of anticipation. You heard it on the show yesterday. The big players get picked up. But every week we're reminding you to drop it like it's hot, which is our way of saying, look at who was dropped in order to pick up those players. Because people, they have needs on their roster. That means that they might have to let go of, of depth pieces that you can pick up. And some of the players that might have been dropped this week or are available late in the week we want to talk about on today's segment. I think one of the bigger ones is Marquez Callaway. See if he was dropped after a one catch week one against Jair Alexander. It wasn't his week, right? Like Jameis Winston only completed 14 passes. The long bomb touchdown went to uh, Deontay Harris and Callaway. 30% of the targets went to Adam Troutman. Right. Yeah. Yeah. 30% of the 14 went to Adam Troutman. The 20. Oh, attempts. That's fair. Yeah. Um, but Marquez Callaway is somebody that could be out there. Do you believe that you should pick him up and take a take a glance his direction? Yeah, I, I Carolina do. this week. I, I expect Jameis to have to throw the ball more, and I think he is going to be the number one target. You drafted him for the hopeful upside. He got a very bad cornerback matchup this week, and we knew that. Like we we talked about that prior to the game. It's it's always comforting when this isn't just uh you know looking back change of opinion advice but like this was kind of expected prior um on the other side of the same game something that was I not like, necessarily I like this way more uh not necessarily well and the, and he's far more available mm -hmm. uh even after waivers have run through he's only rostered in 22 percent of leagues but mark marquez valdez scantling uh, MVS wide receiver for the Green Bay Packers. He was very involved. He had a very good target market share. All of his targets, twenty two percent, and they all came from Aaron Rodgers. It wasn't uh, the garbage time of uh, Jordan Love, which is where Randall Cobb got all those targets. 
Right. So uh, I, I think MVS is someone that you should take a look at. So the you're, you're in on that too, Mike. And I yes, very very much so. The twenty two percent of targets, like a high I target just don't share. Get, I don't see it. I can't get into this. A high target share. He from, stinks from Aaron Rodgers. Who like, I I don't I don't think that he stinks. He definitely had some uh, some big games last year. What's one? You had five games where he was a top twenty wide receiver. He's not. He will not be consistent. That's not what we're saying here. But we're saying at, at the end of the week, you got to keep never not working. And and this matchup against the Detroit Lions, like, okay, there is a there's a great shot here that MVS gets a a fifty yard touchdown or whatever. So Callaway or MVS, if you had the choice, I would because you're probably signing them to play them. I would go MVS. Wow. Uh, I I think I would tie to the better quarterback and the longer term potential in the sense that uh Callaway is a rental until Michael Thomas did is we, there. Did we talk about Van Jefferson on the waiver show or did we not get Slightly, to talk about him? He, I mean he was only three receptions. It was uh the huge touchdown the the, <laughs> the where, where uh what do you got to call glass when you catch it off of your face? Isn't isn't that the rules? I just wonder like there were only 26 attempts in that game. Sure, he, he's interesting. He's he's interesting, but he is the the third option at best to me when, when you have uh, Cooper Cup and uh, Robert Woods. Where MVS, where we're also bringing this name up again because he was the talk of camp, and you were the, you're the talk of camp, and you go right away to a 22 percent target share in a game where they need you. He's he's interesting to me. To me, Detroit, San Francisco is who he gets to play next. Where Callaway this week. Sure, I'll I'll play him against Carolina, but then he's against the Patriots and the Giants. Not really where I want to play Callaway. Cedric yeah. Wilson is a name you guys brought up before the show. Yes. Wide receiver for the Cowboys. With the injury to Michael Gallup, he's another guy that I, I'm not really into just because of what you just described about Van Jefferson where – you had 12 targets, I think, or 10 or 12 targets that went to the tight end position in Dallas. You have Amari Cooper and CeeDee Lamb. You have an offense that threw the ball 900 million times due to just the way the game flow was against Tampa Bay. That's going to come down. Zeke is going to get involved. I don't think that comes down this week against the Chargers. The Chargers uh, made the Washington defense look bad last year. I can't remember the stat off the top of my head, but it was like they own – they. Uh, something with a 300 yard passer of uh, it's been quite some time. And, and that was what Herbert did to them where Cedric Wilson is now the third wide receiver for the Cowboys. Michael Gallup before going down to his uh, injury saw seven targets and then Wilson saw three. So that role you're talking seven plus targets is possible for, for Cedric Wilson in a game that, uh, is it still the highest over under of the week? I believe it might be the second highest, but it's okay. at, uh, it's at I want to say fifty five. Um, yes, yes, it is. Yes, a, okay, yes. let's go. <laughs> a fifty five point over under. I don't think the Cowboys are going to be able to stop the Chargers. And and uh, how does it not hit the over? I don't know. Like and uh, I feel like it's going to be seventy points. <laughs> and Lawrence just ended up with the broken foot. Correct. We talked about that on the Correct, Green Room show. Correct, which means the defense. Marcus Lawrence. Yes, for yeah. Dallas is is hurting. I I do think Cedric Wilson is interesting, but it is it is difficult in fantasy to want to rely on at best the target number three. But he is a guy that um could be involved. Here's a name specific. I think for you're in, a, a lot of leagues have IR spots, and what's going to happen to half of every team in every league is you're going to have a player. That's just ruled out this week. Uh, he's he's not there, and you're going to you're going to be able to slide him into your IR. And the players that you want to pick up in that situation are backup running backs who have who are one injury away from complete massive relevance. And to me, that's Alex Collins, running back for the Seattle Seahawks. Uh, Rashad Penny was the backup. He went down. Alex Collins has always performed admirably when given the chance, including last year. If something were to happen to Chris Carson, I would want Alex Collins stashed because he'd be the big waiver pickup of yeah, the following trying, week. Trying to get ahead of it the way, like if you had picked up Elijah Missile last mm -hmm. week, it would have not cost you $91 in fab. All right, that was never not working. Get up to 100% of dandruff protection. That's never not working with head and shoulder scalp shield technology available at walmart.com. News and notes from around the league. Presented by Sleeper. 
Odell Beckham Jr. has been ruled out for week two for the Browns. He was kind of a surprise last week to be ruled out. Now you kind of roll your eyes and go, like, does he come back? I mean, the, the, the social media vague booking he's, he's is vague tweeting. It's not. It's good. not good. Like you wonder, you know, is this a medical staff decision? Is this a head coach decision? Is this a we always win games without you decision? Um, I don't know. It, it's just. He has taken a long time in, th in assuming that this is dealing with the injury he dealt with all camp, recovering from the ACL. It's been a long time. I cannot fathom that. Let's say he's active week three. Are you really going to start him in the first action in a year and a half off of injury? Like I, I'm not. I mean, I, I wouldn't have drafted him. But um, my point is, <laughs> it is, it is getting dicey for Odell. Like. Yeah, it is. I, I think he is a, one of those landmines on rosters right now you where have he's to, hurting you. You have to get back from injury. Then you have to prove that you can be fantasy relevant to be started. And it's feeling less likely that that's going to happen, at least in the first half of the year. Now, Anthony Schwartz and Donovan Peoples-Jones, like these guys are going to be involved in this offense other than Jarvis Landry because they – Landry is is what he is, right? He's he's going to be more of an underneath uh, receiver with along with Hooper, but Schwartz had a heck of a week one. He did. He is a burner. Uh, sub four four. He's in the four threes. I think his pro day was four two seven. Yes. Um, and his Schwartz was very is big. Is your Schwartz was as, is as big as it was mine? as big as yes. mine on the field uh, this last week. <laughs> Josh Jacobs didn't practice. Due to toe and ankle injuries, I'm not surprised about that. I mean, you're coming off a Monday night game, and you weren't going to be practicing if you watched him come off the field every yeah. time last week. Yeah, he was hobbling all over the place. If you played Jacobs, I do wonder. That was like, some lucky, lucky touchdown strikes. It was, it was, and I think he started last year with a couple, like a two or three touchdown game too. You wonder if the toe, like if they, they switch cleats on the sideline, they were talking about putting the steel plate in for like turf toe. Like you could, you could have a situation here where maybe you cash in on that two touchdowns mm -hmm. right yeah. away. Yeah. And um, Yeah, he was – I mean, uh, yards per attempt is certainly not everything, he, but he ended the, the day with 10 for 34 and one reception. But because he scored two touchdowns, he was very fantasy relevant, but – it looked rough, man. It yes. looked very rough. Yeah, Baltimore was a tough matchup, so you did get lucky. But if you could package trade Josh Jacobs plus another player and trade up for a running back that disappointed um, in week one, maybe you get lucky and you can nab a, sure. an actual stud running back. What do you do? Like yesterday on, on the live show in the afternoon, we talked about whether you can kind of cash in on like a Tyson or a Elijah Mi Missile. Sorry, Missile. I've got to pronounce that correctly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, would you rather have Jacobs or Eliza? Eliza, <laughs> I'm not going to be able to. Eliza <laughs> and Peggy. <laughs> okay, all right, off to a good start. Jacobs or uh, Eliza, missile. As of this moment, I would probably still rather have Jacobs because he's done it. We know his role is secure. Um, but it is interesting that I'm going hard on waivers after Eliza and wanting to capitalize. On and he plays Pittsburgh this week, yeah. followed up by Miami. No Evan Ingram tonight. Yeah. So ruled out again. Uh, Hollywood Brown is not practicing due to an ankle injury. So I actually think Sammy is a nice streaming option this week. Something I never in a million oh. years thought I would say. But no. he yeah. got he got you, Andy. <laughs> he yeah. fell right yeah. into his trap. <laughs> he got you big time. Can't wait to revisit this one. <laughs> I can't believe I said that out loud. Devonta Freeman was brought up by the Ravens to their active roster. This one was very surprising to me. I mean, he's he. I talked about it last year. He did. actually had games for New York where he looked good. Le'Veon Bell never looked good last year. Yes, this so, is where it's strange and surprising to me is that they worked both of these guys out. They chose Lev Bell first. And brought him onto the practice squad, and then then they got to see him. And then Gus too Edwards, much. maybe that was it. And then Gus well, and Edwards role covered. is like the role in the offense may be different now than the one they thought they were signing Left Bell for. Yeah. So this remains to be seen what will happen with with Tyson Murray and Freeman. All right. Uh, not sure about Will Fuller's role. That's what Brian Flores, head coach of the uh, of the Dolphins, said. 
playing the Bills, probably a. I mean, you could you could try it. I mean, he's a deep threat, so you're he's a big play player. I would probably play Will Fuller this week over Marquez Callaway, but I'd prefer to bench Fuller yeah. and wait and see what happens. Prefer to bench. Well said. But they did. They paid him some money for for a one year deal. Trenton Cannon signed by the Forty ers collecting <laughs> running backs. They're getting as everybody. Always. That was today's news and notes. Brought to you as always by Sleeper. Twenty twenty one seasons here. Get the breaking news alerts that you need to go act on the waiver wire. <laughs> Get the Sleeper app today. Thank <laughs> well, you. That was a car. That was. There was a V in there. There's a vroom <laughs> instead of a. <laughs> I, give, give, give it me the starts with a Y. Oh, You're a, oh, it does. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Well, before we get to our fantasy forecast, I want to thank today's sponsors. Brooklinen that is an amazing company. It is what I sleep on. It's summer again. That means hot, sunny days and nights that are too hot to get any sleep, except not for me because I've got Brooklinen crisp sheets that breathe and keep you cool. means I can say goodbye to those hot, sweaty summer nights. Mm. Brooklinen was started to create beautiful, high-quality home essentials that don't cost an arm and a leg. They work directly with manufacturers to make luxury available directly to you without the luxury-level markups, so you can get their amazing array of products at a reasonable price. I'm talking about buttery, soft, and breathable sheets, plush and absorbent towels, cozy robes, comfy loungewear, and they are very, very confident. They come with a 365-day warranty. This stuff is built to last. So... Give yourself the comfort refresh you deserve and get it for less at Brooklyn. And go to brooklinen.com, use the promo code FANTASY to get $20 off with a minimum purchase of $100. That's Brooklyn, B R O O K L I N E N.com, and enter the promo code FANTASY for $20 off with a minimum purchase of $100. It's brooklinen.com, promo code FANTASY. Brooklyn, week one was incredible. Let's make week, week two even better. Get in on this Deal. action. Deal. <laughs> Let's do it. You know how you do that, Andy? Draft Kings. Bet the over on the Charger Look, game? Draft Kings, the official daily fantasy partner of the NFL. They're putting you in the center of the action of week two, and new customers can get a free shot at millions of dollars, millions of dollars in total prizes with your first deposit by signing up using the code BALLERS. If you've never played Draft Kings, it's simple. It's just like fantasy football. You set a lineup, and this one you have to stay under the salary cap. And then you go. And then Sunday is even more fun. You feel the action like never before. Download the DraftKings app now. Use the code BALLERS. And this week, new customers get a free shot at millions of dollars in total prizes. Enter the code BALLERS to try and get that free shot at millions in total prizes with your first deposit. That's code BALLERS. Only at DraftKings, the official daily fantasy partner of the NFL. Minimum $5 deposit required. Eligibility restrictions apply. See DraftKings.com for details. Fantasy Forecast. All right, into the matchups we go. The Cincinnati Bengals travel to Chicago to take on the Bears. DraftKings Sportsbook line here, Bears minus two and a half. The over-under in this game is 46 points. Okay. Bengals surprised a lot of people. They won at home in week one against Minnesota. It was a, an overtime game. This is a revenge game for Andy Dalton. Oh, yes, of course. So, I mean, what a narrative that is. Uh, what, I know, Mike, you have some strong feelings about the beard game. And the, the Oh, I love Dalton's beard. Oh, you're a big fan? Oh, I, I, I think I he thought was, you said... A helmet off, yes. Yeah, yeah, this, no, yeah, well, the, hold on. The Andy Dalton with the beard looks... Just, I mean, it looks like a GQ guy. Absolutely. But with the, the helmet on, where it's the fiery red mustache... That's all you see. It's... It's interesting. <laughs> yeah, it's very interesting. It's, 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 I've never seen anything like that where a guy helmet on, you're like, what's going on there? And then helmet off, you're like, oh, man, yeah. that's a handsome fella. Yeah, he's pretty. It's terrifying with the helmet. <laughs> like, legit, legitimately, he looks maybe, at the camera and is like, ah! Maybe what? that's better for him. What happened? Uh, you're not playing Andy Dalton. No. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Joe Burrow, you're not playing him against Chicago. Chicago got beat by a couple deep plays last week. But their defense was pretty good. Yeah, I, I have them winning this game. I, that's where uh, I was hoping we would talk about that of the Bears. It, they weren't as bad as the end of the game no. numbers. No, they weren't at all. And then, you know, you're going to play Joe Mixon. Uh, Thirty-three opportunities Holy last crap. week. 
this is the workload that that you signed up for when you invested in Joe Mixon in the draft. It's why there was reason to be excited. There's still the overarching, okay, do you get a full season of Joe Mixon and 33 opportunities? Uh, that's 33 chances to get hurt, obviously. You got him week two. But you got him in week two, and they you know, they were pretty impressive on offense altogether. Um, I would agree with that. That's one of the things. You said you don't play Joe Burrow. I, I think you can play Joe Burrow in this matchup, I, not because of the matchup, but because of Joe Burrow. Um, I think they need a little bit of credit. I was critical of the draft capital of Jamar Chase. He showed up. He said, I'm here for real. T. Higgins looked great. He was dominating the first three quarters, had to leave and get an IV. Um, so he missed the fourth and overtime. But this offense was was clicking, and, and I think it's TBD about the Minnesota Vikings defense from last week. Was their defense better, and the Bengals overcame it? Or sure. was their defense just not that much better as you know was hoped, and, and that's why the Bengals were good? This is a real true litmus test uh, against the Bears. I, I think if Joe Burrow comes out and so has... It's a, a Christmas test, Jason. <laughs> yes. Uh, if, <laughs> I can't believe that worked! <laughs> um... If if it's great, uh, then I'm all in on on uh, the Bengals, you know, being a good enough offense. But I do think if you've got Burrow on your roster, I'm I'm not terrified to play him. Chase then Higgins then Boyd is that how you'd order the wideouts? I would still go Higgins then Chase then Boyd, but I I get it. I mean, the big play potential we saw it from from Chase again. Higgins uh, was the target leader at at one point, uh, and then. <laughs> You know, well, I mean, he was carted off the field yeah. and didn't play. Allen Robinson, you're playing him. Yes. I like a bounce back week for Robinson. Tons of targets last week. David Montgomery, obviously impressive in week one. Uh, Darnell Mooney, uh, still interesting. Still, I mean, you can take a shot here in this matchup. He was targeted seven times last week. They did not throw the, I mean, what happened to Mooney is the exact same thing that happened to Robinson. Um, Robinson had, I think, 11 targets. He only ended up with 35 yards. Mooney had seven targets. He only ended up with 26. There was everything underneath. And what Mooney's special sauce is getting downfield. So hopefully their offensive line gives them a shot to do that against Cincinnati at home, and you can get a big play from Mooney. Um, but he's in the Marquez Callaway category of start, flex, desperation play. Um, he also played 100% of snaps, which is something you didn't yeah. see last year. Yeah, Mooney is interesting. The, we'll see if the Bengals can get the same type of pressure that uh, Aaron Donald can get. Cole Komet. We, we'll see. We'll see. Mm. He, I, he, he, interesting. Over, I, I would play him over uh, Mike Gesicki and make that, that change if that's who you were rolling with week one, but he would basically be about the last starter in your league. The Houston Texans take on the Cleveland Browns. DK Sportsbook has this at Browns minus 12 and a half. Oh, brother. Over-under is 47 and a half. All will be revealed about the Houston Texans in this game. <laughs> <laughs> I, that's at least the – I'd I take, take the Browns minus 12 and a half if wow. it were me. Really? Yeah, I would. I I, I think it's going to be a bloodbath. I really do. I do, too. I, I, I shared that – I rewatched that that Texans – uh, Jaguars yes. game, and I've never seen a team play so poorly in a blowout victory. They blew out the Jaguars, who just gifted every ounce of this game to them. They didn't take it; they just they were just gifted. So, um, yeah, I think the Browns are going to really do bad, bad things <laughs> on the field. Uh, and, and and that means you can play Baker. Would you play Baker or Joe Burrow? I'd play Baker at I, home. I think I would play Burrow solely because I don't expect the Browns to have to throw the ball much. I mean, this is a Kareem Hunt, Nick Chubb game where, uh, granted, they could get up by Baker throwing, and Baker looked good. I'm I'm happy with Baker, but I just don't think they're going to really need him, whereas I, I could see the Bears offense doing something against the, against the Bengals if I had to pick one of these. 30 implied team points for the Cleveland That's Browns. A lot. That's At home, a lot. our consensus rankings have okay. Burrow and Mayfield back-to-back -back with Baker one spot ahead. Um, okay, I, I'm, I'm switching. You're switching? I'm switching. Burrow to Baker? Yeah. Safer. Safer. Uh, Nick Chubb, Kareem Hunt, yes. 
and yes? Yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll do both. 47% of snaps for Kareem Hunt. This is the same offense we saw last year. Jarvis Landry. I like it. Uh, I want in on this, thir- like I said, 30 implied team total points for the Cleveland Browns. I want in. Let's put this to the test here with what we saw last week. Brandon Cooks had a great game. Mark Ingram had a good game. Uh, David Johnson caught a touchdown pass. Are you playing any Texans in this matchup? Are you willing to play any Texans? Like The only Texan Cooks? I am willing to play would be Brandon Cooks, and I would prefer to not play him in this matchup, but we, we talked about this in the draft season. At the end of the season, Brandon Cooks is probably going to be a top 15 wide receiver. He's going to get it done. He always does. Uh, or at least a top 24 option. He was good week one. He's just he's just an actual really good option. He's a good player. Yeah, he's a good player. He was drafted in the first round. He's been good his whole career, and he's the only guy to throw the ball to. So I, I am willing to play Brandon Cooks. I'm willing to play Brandon Cooks for as bad as the Texans looked. I thought Taylor looked fine. Pretty, I th- yeah, I, th- I thought he looked good for what you should expect from from a journeyman quarterback at this point of his career. Mark Ingram, the volume superstar of week one, I am benching. Uh, he's he's someone that you need the positive game script. So David Johnson, in my, like, in my season long, I don't think I'm going to take the shot at DJ. Uh, he was the passing downs guy, but like in DFS, it, it, maybe, maybe. Uh, for what it's worth, Cleveland's defense was pretty impressive last week. They pressured Mahomes on 42% of dropbacks. They also only gave up... You know, 9.3 fantasy points, I think, to Clyde in that game. So that puts Ingram up against it, no doubt about it, especially when you're sharing a backfield. So Yeah, I would I would expect David Johnson to have more points in this game because of game script than, than Mark Ingram, and I would not start David Johnson. I love the defense for the Browns in this one, if you can play them mm-hmm. at home. Uh, and coming off a loss. You know, that was a tight game with, with the Chiefs. It, it came down to the wire. Moving on, the Rams. Travel to Indianapolis, taking on the Colts. Uh, the DraftKings Sportsbook line here, Rams minus 3.5 on the road. Over-under over is 48.5. And, a half. and um, did you guys see? I think Matthew Stafford won the Offensive he did. Player he of the Week. He had a perfect passer rating. I found it egregious. Yeah, Kyler had five touchdowns. Yeah, you know, I'm, I, I find that to be shocking. I don't find it to be shocking in the sense that uh, – Stafford was, I think, part of the reason or the main reason they won, whereas I think Chandler Jones yes. d- stole that game. Okay. I don't hate it. I, he was per- he was perfect. That's fair. Kyler was very good, but yeah. under one- perfection. Man, but five touchdowns. Yeah. Uh, but the Rams here traveling to Indy. The Colts uh, have an implied point total of 22. The Rams at 26. I mean... Rams looked the way we thought they'd look. I mean, they were two-thirds of our NFC Super Bowl picks. Um, other than Jonathan Taylor going up against this Rams defense, are you trying anybody else out on the Colts' side of the ball? I mean, Naeem Hines got a lot of work, so I'm okay flexing Hines. Yes, that, uh, would be the, that would be the player. I, I would say Jonathan Taylor and Naeem Hines, you can you could play. Jonathan, you will. Naeem Hines is a flex option. I'm not sure that I'm taking... I'm not chasing Pascal. I'm not chasing Pascal. I'm holding on Pittman. Uh, Jack Doyle, Mo Ali Cox didn't do anything. So no. I, I think that's that's it. Now, obviously, with the conglomeration of that, that means no Carson Wentz. Yeah, this is another one of those tests of let's find out the truth about week one because you saw both John, Johnny Taylor and Hines. Both of them independently saw a 20-plus percent target share, which is... That's outrageous that your your entire offense is running through uh, the passing game to the running backs. Let's see if that was just a scheme against the Seattle Seahawks or if that's the way that Carson Wentz I think is going to play. A, that's a good point is that in a lot of these matchups in our previews, there are things that happen in week one where we're going to say, are we going to – is it going to happen again or was this a one-off? Because you don't know yet, even right. about the defenses. One of the things I'll point out is that Carson Wentz was hurried and hit and sacked as, as much as anyone this last week. Their offensive line didn't do a great job, and he, of course, held the ball too long. But their left tackle is something to watch. I think that when uh, Eric Fisher – I'm not sure if he's going to be back 
in week two or not, monitor that. But I wonder if when he is back, you see less passing to the running backs, less of those dump offs, less of those uh, being hurried in the pocket, get it to the running back type of plays. But on the other side, you can play Stafford, Henderson, Cup. You should definitely start Robert Woods. I'd put him right back in there. And then Tyler Higby was out there for every single play of the game last week. Yeah. Five for 68. Um, they didn't have to throw the ball a lot. 26 pass attempts, some big plays. Higby looked the part to me as a critical piece in a very good offense. Yeah, I mean, he's got a very good baseline for the weeks where you don't get a touchdown. A lot of these tight ends that aren't the top options are touchdown or bust. He has touchdown or meh, and that's a lot better. Yeah. Buffalo traveling to Miami to take on the Dolphins. Both, uh, Well, the Dolphins won last week. Buffalo lost. DraftKings has this as Bills minus three and a half on the road. The over-under is 47 and a half points. Um, I do have the Bills in this one, and I think that they will bounce back. They're a well-coached team. Josh Allen still put together an okay fantasy day. Like, he didn't completely destroy you because he ran the ball. He had a couple of a couple of runs. It wasn't a pretty, pretty game against Pittsburgh. No. At all. But um, I still don't think you do anything. Uh, rash with Josh Allen just because of a tough week one against maybe the best defense in football. Yeah, I was going to say, I, I went back um, and you got to give credit to the Steelers defense. Uh, Watt was destroying things and, and that's it's one of the most difficult defenses to play against. So while Josh Allen had a few passes that were his own doing, where it wasn't hu hurried and he threw it in the ground or he overthrew a guy, whatever, that happens. I think you are completely right Andy you don't be scared off of these bills the Dolphins are still a good defense uh, this isn't one of those it's not like the the bills are going up against Dallas and you have to force everyone in your lineup uh but I was impressed with them last week to be honest with the bills no with the Dolphins oh okay I was like oh, that's I, I strange not, take yeah, that was a strange take. uh no the Dolphins defense and just like holding up against uh New England I thought Mac Jones played well and he still couldn't overcome this defense they make they make big plays the defense makes timely plays, and and that's, you know, I the game should be close. It's a divisional matchup. It should be another close game. How are we feeling about Devin Singletary headed into Sunday? If if they, which is again a big if, Zach Moss is inactive. I don't. People want to know what to do with Zach Moss. Uh, yeah. should they just freak out? Yeah, uh, I I think at this point you I have, would drop him. Like, how can you not freak out? when at any moment your player is a healthy scratch because he is not part of the game plan. If he is active and part of the game plan, I don't believe you can play him. The oh, He is an insurance back to me. The only time that, that Zach Moss is going to ha be someone that you can start with confidence is only in the situation that he is the only back there. So uh, he's not worth he's not worth a, a roster spot unless you're just viewing him as insurance to Devin Singletary. So Singletary though, we, we saw him be the guy, 76% of the snaps, 16 opportunities, including five targets. If Moss is gone, Singletary is probably in my lineup. I, I think okay. this is an easier matchup, not a great one, but easier than the Steelers. Um, it's really going to be a matter of if, if Moss is active, I am absolutely not because he, Singletary fumbled twice. So it's a matter of like, are they going to trust him? Or if Moss is active, they might, you know, it, it could be kind of the, the punishment. Like you got your chance, you fumbled twice. We lost the game. You're not the guy anymore. He's a scary start. Singletary is even with those opportunities. Like he, there was a time when he had a lot of opportunities and it's still, you know, it was under double digit fancy points last week. Obviously tough matchup, but still scares me a little bit. Um, I'm with Jason. If if Zach Moss is inactive, I'd be willing to play him. Miles Gaskin in this one had 14 opportunities, 54% of snaps last week, uh, had five receptions. Uh, if you were starting Miles Gaskin or Eliza, oh, my God. <laughs> Eliza and Peggy. So every time I screw that up, I'm getting Hamilton <laughs> shot back oh, in my face. You're darn right. I mean, we don't get a lot of opportunities <laughs> to talk What's about Eliza on this show. <laughs> only since you invented this ridiculous nickname has he become – like there's something about saying missile that that, gets that throws you to the me Z? into Eliza. Mm, I like it. Sounds, Sounds like a personal Mitchell, problem. Mitchell or Gaskin? Uh, I would go Mitchell. Um, 
you know, obvi- obviously we saw what the Bills did to Najee Harris last week. It was not good or kind. He was on the field 100% of the time, and I think he's a, a better talent. But in a PPR league, that's not to say you can't start Miles Gaskin. He had five receptions. But, I mean, that's already – if you get five receptions, you can't really have a terrible game. Yeah, it's, it's dancing with the devil. Because you're not 100 percent sure that's also the, nine for 49 on the ground. You're not 100 percent sure that the missile will be the guy in the matchup, uh, but I think I would, I'd take that dance. I'd go Mitchell. Uh, all right, so Stefan Diggs, uh, yeah, yep. you play him. Beyond Stefan Diggs, though, I don't know if there's really certainty in any other wide receiver option in this entire matchup. Waddle, Parker, Fuller. Sanders, Davis, Beasley. Full PPR, I would still say that you, that Beasley is a fine flex. He had 13 targets last week. And there's no way you can play Gasicki after the goose, right? No. Why not I, take a shot with the Jared Cook or a Dallas Goddard oh, yes, or yes. A Noah Fan? Gasicki in, in your normal uh, home leagues, you know, five, six bench normal roster construction should not be rostered. He should be on the waivers taking a shot at a different tight end. Yeah, he was in the draft process. We were talking about, yeah, Tua is going after the tight end position, but Gasicki's a part-time player. We we still aren't even sure that he's going to be the the predominant tight end, and he was he was smithed with snaps. A smithed. It was in there over 70% of the time. And he was involved in the uh, preseason quite yeah. a bit. Yeah, so I'm, I'm with Jason. I would cut Gasicki. Battle for the basement, the New England Patriots against the New York Jets oh, in New York. <laughs> DraftKings Sportsbook has it as Patriots minus five and a half, over under 41 points. I guess that five and a half is more indicative of the low over under, one of the lower ones of the week. But I would have expected the Patriots to get a little bit more credit um, on the points here. Bill Belichick hasn't lost to the Jets since 2015. I'm guessing that is Rex Ryan era uh defeat I'm guessing it doesn't change this week no I mean the Patriots defense against the Jets or the Browns defense at home against Houston which, which would you go with I would go with the Patriots defense solely because um rookie quarterback uh, yeah you're looking for turnovers you're looking for sacks uh, you, I don't I don't think you know that Tyrod Taylor is anything special but he actually protects the ball yes he, he does. can he can run away from sacks and he doesn't throw a lot of interceptions. So while they they want, you know, you're not just looking for a defense that's going to stop the other team from scoring a lot. You're looking for a defense that's running up against someone that could make mistakes. Yes. And and with the offensive line troubles that the New York Jets had, um, certainly a rookie can make mistakes here. Stay away from all running backs uh, on the Jets side of the ball. Tevin Agreed. Coleman, Ty Johnson, Michael Carter. No, no, no. Damian Harris, on the other hand, is a candidate for – like, I look to pick him up in leagues this week. Sure. Um, he looked like the best back. It was a tough matchup against the Dolphins, a low-scoring game. I like what I saw from Mac Jones. I like what I saw from Damian Harris. But the output didn't have the touchdowns, so I would have been looking to pick him up, and I think he's going to be great this week. I, I'll yeah. bet he is. Um, I, 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 He's a very good start. Uh, happy to put him in my lineup. I will be watching for Ramondre Stevenson, though, just because I was shocked how early he got in last week, and then and then he fumbled, and then it was you know out. He was banished from so, the land. So I could see him just not even playing this week. Uh, continual punishment. But if he happens to get in early again, um, it'll be indicative, I think, uh, on a season long level. It's funny because all three of these running backs on the New England side are relevant for keeping an eye on while the three running backs on the other side are well me and just yes. just, just run run away that being said the jets probably have the most sure thing at wide receiver Corey davis is the number one maybe the number two as well for uh zach wilson uh, he's looked great for his entire jets tenure and the one thing that wilson can do is you know escape the pocket a little bit hyper target his number one uh, Elijah Moore was awful. I mean, he was really, really bad. He he had the chance on a big play that he, I'm going to call it a drop. Um, he had a, a a drop in the screen game. It wasn't a, a nice debut for Elijah Moore. So Davis is my favorite w- wide receiver in this game. And then it's a decision for Jacoby Myers and, and Nelson Aguilar, who had, you know, okay, week ones, Aguilar scored nine targets for Myers. Which of the two do you prefer in this one? 
I Corey Davis. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, I'll take the safety of Jacoby Myers because this is – I mean, they're both like a – Wide receiver three flex at at the best. Did you did you have any takeaways from Johnny Smith Hunter Henry in week one in terms of confidence levels or like ne- neither of them put up games that were going to help your team and no not really I mean I I think I was really wanting to see what would happen with Mac Jones and he targeted the wide receivers and and James White in a way that made me very like I was starting to buy more and more in on on Johnu hype late into the off season cuz I had just killed him in my draft rankings right. forever. I I never thought he had a chance tight end splitting and then all, I I I changed right up until kickoff and then kickoff was like, "No, yeah, I I don't want I don't want to play with these tight ends." San Francisco 49ers travel to Philadelphia. Nice over under in this one. It's 50 and a half. DraftKings has the line 49ers minus 3. I don't know what's real or not from Philadelphia in week one, to be honest with you. Atlanta Agreed. Is, Atlanta beat themselves. You talked about the penalties. They also don't have an impressive defense or haven't in recent years. 49ers underwhelmed defensively against Detroit, even before, you know, the kind of comeback attempt from Jared Goff. Now, yep. Jalen Hurts had a nice week one. So, I mean, what what is your overall take in this game when you break it down in the tough decisions? So when I look at this game, I, I think that the Eagles are more for real than certainly than we thought starting the season. I would agree with you that you can't just go off of week one and say, oh, they dominated the box score and so they, they are good. But also the San Francisco 49ers losing Jason Verrett, their defense did not look good from the get-go. Their offense looked very good. Yes. So this is a game where I want pieces. I think it's going to hit the over-under. Um, I think it's going to be competitive. Uh, I don't think either team blows either team out here, which is great for fantasy and in, in racking up the, the score. So uh, this is a game where I'm looking. Debo Samuel is someone you, you have to start. Uh, Miles Sanders, Kenneth Gainwell. I, I think Kenneth Gainwell is someone. Are you confident on Sanders? On Miles Sanders? Yeah. Yeah, I am confident on Miles Sanders. I would be perfectly happy to start him. Yeah, I'd be excited to start him this week. Yeah, okay. I mean, I, what I saw from this offense and, and the wide receivers, uh, certainly I would put Devonta Smith first. Um, he looked like the primary target when they had to throw. On the Philly side. On the right? Philly yeah. side. Yeah. Um, rookie wide receiver for the Eagles. Um, he, he was he was the the primary target when the game was still competitive, and then, and then it kind of got out of hand. Yeah, I don't have confidence to flex Gainwell in week two. I wouldn't do that. Are you I saying guess, you would flex him? I think I would. I'm 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 curious. I might flex Gainwell over James White. Um, I view them very similarly in the sense that um, you, you're talking about a, a guy who can be a PPR back. Now, in this game, they blew the Falcons out. They didn't necessarily need to throw the ball a ton, but his usage and the fact that he was on the field so much and sure. his talent said to me that I, I think I could flex Kenneth Gainwell – uh, without you know too much fear here i'm gonna go through the most popular start sit dis- questions coming through for elijah mitchell okay elijah mitchell or saquon barkley oh mitchell fire the missile oh elijah well said. mitchell or chase edmonds i've gone back and forth on that so many times this week uh at I home believe your last answer was edmonds at home um favored i'm gonna Go Edmonds. I will go Edmonds as well, and we can talk about it further at length in the Arizona game, but one of those week one things, let's see how it actually shakes out. James Conner was involved in this game, and when they got to the goal line and inside the five, James Conner was the guy who was taking those snaps and getting those attempts. Kyler got the, the rushing touchdown on a bootleg, but that was James Conner on the field. Yeah, one thing that doesn't show up in the in the box score yep. there was there was a play at the one, and it was James Conner in there, but then it was a false start. Yeah. So it never even goes to the box score, but it, they were lining up to run James Conner right up the middle. Yeah, I think he's the goal line back. That being said, I think Edmonds was in a lot while the game was competitive. Yes. Yeah, sorry. I was I didn't mean to derail the, the missile talk here, but I'd, I think I'd play Chase over the missile. The missile or Tyson Williams. Another report from Greg Roman came out this morning. It said, quote, that the – the days of one running back getting all the snaps are, are over in Baltimore. Yeah, he was asked about um, 
uh, that report. Just Haven't they been through. over for years? Yes. And so that was the report of, like, why wasn't Williams playing more in the second half? And they said we wanted to get more running backs involved. Personally, I take that as a positive that they didn't come out and say, no, Williams was punished for missing his pass protection. We had to get him out of there. We weren't comfortable playing him. So, All that being said, I'm firing up the missile in that one. Yeah, I yes, I agree. Okay, uh, Damian Harris or, or the missile? Harris. Daryl Henderson or the missile? Henderson. Henderson. Okay, Debo, we're playing him. We said that. Devonta Smith. Uh, Kittle, expect him to bounce back in this game, have a better performance. And then Dallas Goddard. Zach Ertz, the Philly tight ends. I guess we're going to talk about them momentarily. We are. Ooh. Starts of the week. Well, let's start at the tight end position. Jason, why don't you start? Okay, let's talk about Dallas Goddard. <laughs> um, he is my start of the week this week. Zach Ertz suffered a hamstring injury in week one. The Eagles are resting him right now through practice. Uh, they're hoping he plays in week two. Either way, uh, Dallas Goddard should be a factor. Ertz played in week one, and Goddard was you know a top five tight end, um, and he was looked to in the red zone. Almost ended up with two touchdowns. Uh, I talked about I really like this game. I like the point total. I like taking the over. Um, so you like it more than Noah Fant with Judy leaving the field? Um, that one is asking for a friend. That one is really really close. Um, remind me, Denver is playing Jacksonville. Yeah. Ooh, that's nice. <laughs> I think, I think that's, oh, 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 man. He had me at Jacksonville. <laughs> Jacksonville. Um, yeah, I, I think you are going to be happy with both of those players. I'd probably go fan. My tight end start of the week is Kyle Pitts against Tampa Bay. Dalton Schultz, Blake Jarwin, they combined for 10 targets, uh, at, you know, for at the tight end position. Yeah. And last week against Tampa, pass rush is going to force targets underneath. He's good for eight or more. I mean, he had the same amount of targets last week as Calvin Ridley. I view both of their performances in the same light. I think he gets eight or more targets in this game. What he does with them, that's going to determine whether you're happy. But, you know, at the tight end position, beyond the Waller, Kelsey, Kittle uh, group, Pitts has as good an opportunity this week as anybody else to have a big game. And I, if you picked Jared Cook up off of the waiver wire, I am putting him in immediately. Right into the lineup. Right, Yeah, right in. I guess it's not the highest over-under anymore. Kansas City has taken that away. But we highlighted the 55-point over-under. Please. 55! Thank you. He saw eight targets last week. That's a 17% target share. And, look, sure, it was probably a Brady-Gronk thing, but the tight end just torched this Cowboys team. But Cook was on the field and almost as active in the receiving game as the primary wide receivers. Yeah, and I'll go right into my quarterback, Justin Herbert, start yes, of the week. Please. This game against Dallas is going to be awesome for fantasy. Um, he looked great in week one. Uh, Justin Herbert didn't It was finish. a weird – he looked great, didn't perform for fantasy at exactly, all. Exactly, which weird. is why I'm making him the start of the week because you might have him and have – hesitation look the Washington football team he went up against last week was very very difficult and he did well there was some fluky plays like when they got down in the red zone they're about to score a touchdown there was a weird thrown fumble um that he just got the ball tipped and then you know it looked like oh they get another play and then it's like nope that pass was a thrown fumble out of the back of the end zone, other team's ball. So the touchdowns didn't come. But in this game against Dallas defense, which if we're even allowed to say those two words together, um, oh, man, I, I want all the pieces. You have to start Justin Herbert. And I'm going to go Russell Wilson against Tennessee in this Russell? one. Russell? Russell. 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 He's going to cook this defense, the defense that just gave up five total touchdowns to Kyler Murray. I think Russ has a chance at the number one overall spot this week against Tennessee. Agreed. Oh, man. When I saw this in there, yeah. Russell is going to – oh, He's going to obliterate the he Titans. He is going to carve them up like the chef he is. All right. Uh, going to be cooking. All right, Mike, your quarterback start. I'm going with Matty Stafford. He is. Uh, he's taking on the Colts. The Colts just gave up the ninth most points to the quarterback position of it, the one you were talking about, Russell Wilson. Uh, and meanwhile, Stafford was 10th against the Chicago Bears, and I think that the Bears might be a little bit of a better defense than the Colts. Uh, Russ beat them deep. 
Uh, do we see a repeat on that Van Jefferson play right at the beginning of the game? Uh, to be determined. But I think that Stafford – Tell me you didn't think that was Deshaun Jackson when you first saw it. Oh, totally did. <laughs> I just I mean, assumed. I mean, 100% assumed it was Deshaun Jackson in week one. Yeah, yeah you just – it was like, I knew that was going to happen. Oh, Van Jefferson. But while Stafford to me doesn't feel like someone where you're like, yep, yeah, I've got top five upside this week, he feels like a real safe top 12 guy. Well, and more professional transitions. My wide receiver is Cooper Cup. Um, goodness gracious! I, I we, well, the, because of the breakfast thing. Because of the breakfast, he's getting that cup of coffee. Is Cooper oh. Cooper cup of coffee? Cooper cup of coffee going to be out there? Stafford had a Cooper cup of coffee. Oh, Stafford's got a Cooper cup of coffee on his team, and it's going to be great. Or Robert Woods. Look, his name is not, look, not conducive for breakfast jokes. Robert Woods breakfast. Say that. Look, then I warned you. I yeah. warned you at the top of the show that stupidity would flow. Yeah. And so Koopa Cup of Coffee. Koopa Cup of Coffee. Look, fuck. Oh, that's Koopa. Koopa. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's Koopa like, Cup of Coffee. Like, like a, King Koopa Cup of exactly Coffee. Exactly right. Spelled the same. Koopa Cup of Coffee. Um I, I would I would uh just Liza. I would encourage <laughs> thank you. <laughs> and Peggy. Um I would encourage you, Foot Clan, to say this at home. Oh, Koopa Cup of Coffee. Koopa Cup of Coffee is fun to say, but seriously, it did look like he fun was to say, the, fun to play. The clear first read for Stafford. All the jokes about them getting breakfast early. They were in sync. He was fantastic. And I, I genuinely believe you want to take the shot now. Like he's someone that I would maybe even go look at trading for. And the matchup, the Colts couldn't guard anyone last week. Uh, I, I, I don't blame the Colts as much as I blame Russell Wilson, but Stafford Cup, they're going to be great here. It's it's you know, Lockett had two touchdowns, and if you looked at the Gerald Everett play uh, where Lockett was wide open for another third touchdown if it was just Russ has got to pick which guy he wanted to give a touchdown so I think Cooper Cup's gonna ball out we have a bunch of players interconnected throughout these starts of the week because we love these games and Mike Williams is my start of the week against Dallas yes um we talked about it the game's gonna be a shootout he had 12 targets last week he looked like a stud he looked like a player doing the things he was drafted to do he's healthy right now and that's all that matters I am chasing that first week performance with Mike Williams. I believe it's going to be a great week. So, so start him, flex him, whatever the case may be. Mike Williams is my wide receiver start. And a lower tier wide receiver I want to give some love to here is Jarvis Landry. I've, I've mentioned it during the matchup. I want in on this. I, I want in on those 30 implied uh, points. Maybe it turns out that Nick Chubb, Rushes in four touchdowns, and, and it's a little bit disappointing, but he had an 18% target share. Uh, since Odell has come to Cleveland, Jarvis is averaging five receptions in those games where Odell is not there. So I think that he is a safe wide receiver uh, wide receiver three play or of the week. And we know that every once in a while, Jarvis just he, – he has himself a game, and I, I think it's very possible this week. Well, you can't like Baker without knowing that Jarvis right. will be involved. So, Jason, running back. My running back start of the week is David Montgomery. He was absolutely outstanding. One of the best-looking running backs in week one, and that was against the Rams' top defense. Cincinnati looked fine last week, but that was in Cincinnati's home opener. Now they're going on the road. It's going to be an easier matchup than the Rams. Uh, the Bears are both at home and favored. That is really uh, predictive for touchdowns. So I think David Montgomery is someone, honestly, this is probably the last time this year we can make him a start of the week because, I mean, you know, at some point I think he's got the Steelers on the schedule this year and if I'll probably play him no problem at that point. He just looked so good. They're going to lean on him. Uh, remember when, remember when uh, I had you at Jacksonville? Yes. Well, I'm, I have Melvin Gordon at Jacksonville this week as my running back start of the week. Okay. His Jacksonville is hashtag not good. Gordon will get plenty of opportunities. I think he's going to get goal line work in this game. He showed he can still break a big play. He also had three targets out of the backfield. That's something Gordon can do. Javante only had one. Um, they're going to split time, but there is plenty to go around in Jacksonville this week. Uh, Teddy Bridgewater can move the offense, and I think Gordon ends up in the end zone again. And I'm going to go with Damian Harris taking on the Jets. Yes. Uh, nearly a touchdown favorite. And, you know, plenty of implied uh, points for the Patriots offense. 23 carries, 100 yards. And he even saw some targets. Look, fellas. That's, what do you know? That's crazy. Damian Harris saw some targets. If he's going to see three targets. What do you do a with week, them? 
Uh, I can't tell you right now. <laughs> Can't tell you, but he saw three targets. On a scale of uh, James White to Sonny Michelle, how'd he do? He saw okay. three targets. He, he saw watched them fly by. He saw three opportunities through the air, and he's going to get the groundwork. So I, I think that Damian Harris is a smash play this week. Well, on to the ever important boom boom kicker. Jason Moore's Ironclad, Locked and Loaded, 100% Guaranteed Boom Boom Kicker of the Week. Last week, I sat down to poo. This week, I stood up. And you can stand beside me with the Bucks Ryan suck up. Okay. It's nothing like standing to poop. I did see that's where I went and and I also like how this is I feel like I'm part of a a, a story, story now. That's right. Yeah, that's you right. Get, you get, is this is I'm this I'm going to weave a narrative through the year. Through I the hope boom I hope also, not. No. Also I want to make sure I heard you, have you correctly. Have you stood to poo before? You you sat down to poo, but mm -hmm. this week you stand up. That's and people right. can join you. That's it's going to so fall a long way. You're going that's right. This is a standing this poop. This is it's a stand not, and drop. It's not an often uh, called for maneuver, but um, I don't know if I could do that. I, I don't think it's possible. <laughs> Can you just poop standing up? Like I mean, you, I don't like, mean like a, a a crouch. I mean a full, full stand, stand up. Just squeeze it out. I don't think can you can you, do it. I mean, if you had to no go, way. if you had to go, I mean, you have to like be, at least be a frame with your legs out. Yeah, I don't. You I mean, have to, or you've got. Al to, thinks you spread the you, cheeks with your hands. <laughs> just. <laughs> Oh, you no. gotta. That'd be a mushy mess if oh, you didn't. No. I'm, I, I, there's no nothing. It's not gonna go well clean wise from a standing Regardless. position. Whew. Um. Once again, delay, <laughs> delay, delay. Before we elegantly move oh. into a sponsor, <laughs> we want to thank Pristine Auction. Uh, Chris, uh, Kyler Murray signed jersey right now, sixty four dollars. Amari Cooper signed logo football, forty two dollars. Hundreds of daily sports memorabilia auctions. They, it keeps getting bigger, better because the selection keeps getting better at Pristine Auction. You can find your player and then rub it in your friend's face when you put on the uh, Amari Cooper uh, helmet and run around. I mean, like softly, too. You could yeah. the jersey. Just give him a little rub. A little soft wipe on the face. We need to shut this thing <laughs> down. PristineAuction.com. Use the code BALLERS. That'll do it. More matchups tomorrow. Foot Clan Friday coming up. Enjoy this game tonight. We, we've been surprised by these matchups before. And I hope to be surprised again. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.